so what should people remember if say they spot you in australia or india or new zealand or anywhere and if they want to come say hello what's the right way to do that with mitchell johnson just leave me alone <laughs> okay there you go <laughs> no i just i just think it's it's timing um it's you know not when i'm got a mouth full of food that's uh, one of the one of the big big pet hates i think most people in australia are pretty good to be honest like even with when i'm with my kids like i've had people come up to me like and say oh i saw you the other day and you had your kids with you so i just left you left you alone i'm glad i've run into you now i can have a have a talk to you basically and i said oh that's cool cool thank you um so that's quite nice when when people do do that have that respect and understanding i guess um i don't think it'll ever change in india india's there's a billion over a billion people here and they don't see uh cricket well cricket's their religion they all say it they say oh it's our religion like and they get so excited and so pumped up and, you know, it's their only chance to most of the time to see a famous cricketer. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's really difficult here. Uh, I mean, even when you say like, oh, can you wait like five minutes? We're having, sometimes they may not understand why. Um, different cultures. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's harder here. But in Australia, I think it's pretty good. Most people are very sensible and I, look i'm like out of the game long enough now anyway so i don't and, and where i live most people uh you know know me and are very respectful and yeah so it's all good i think it's just it's just how you approach i mean like i said most people are friendly anyway um yeah it's it's only when you when i was in my career you'd have the occasional person who'd get the dutch courage when they'd had a few beers or and carry on a little bit and then yeah it's quite quite rude and you, know, you just move on from it i think those are the scenarios which can be challenging right not so much now like um you are out and about uh, not so much in india either way because you're more yeah. protected in a way there but in australia or in england uh maybe you've not had a good day on the field and someone's had a few to drink and they, they're in your ear and constantly jabbering at you and then to hold on to your composure and not there have been a f- only a few incidents in cricket uh, yeah. where you know cricket has lost to school or her yeah. school uh, those must be the most challenging i guess yeah and it's not really fair because uh, some people think that they have every right to say what they want even when you're in public and we had a, um, an incident in england um was with with Jess and my, and my daughter and we're walking to meet up with her parents. Um, yeah, I think it was in Cardiff, maybe. And we're walking past in an alleyway, walking past like a pub and these blokes got yelled out and started get, getting into me. So I started to walk over towards them because I just, I was with my daughter and my family and um, Jess was like, don't worry about it. Just, And she was like quite annoyed with it as well. So, I mean, those kind of incidents do happen. Um and look, I was always fine with, well, not always fine with it on the field. Like once I got used to it, it was okay. Um, it's just all part of part of the game. Um, but I just, I just never liked the fact that it happened in public. I just thought that was just crossing the line. Um, and if you don't like me, that's fine. Um, just don't say anything. You don't need to. You don't need to provoke. Like I mean, yeah, I've had plenty of occasions where, you know, I've really wanted to do something but in the end i'm the one that loses out like um i mean there's been a few incidents where guys in the team could have got themselves in trouble and not because of their fault um and sometimes maybe it has been but most of the times i've seen has um been more the other way just someone provoking and knowing that they can get away with it i mean i did call one bloke out once (laughs) i think i had mitch marsh and a couple of boys were in brizzy and had a had a um one day game, I think, one day series, and went out, and some guy started at me straight away in this in this pub, and I just turned around and got into his face straight away and said, "Well, let's go outside." Like, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh no, you can't do that." And I was like, "Yeah, I can." <laughs> I said, "I'm just like you, mate. I'm just like anyone else. Can't just yeah." That 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 annoys me, but I think generally, like people are very good though. Like, and yeah, it is. It's more that Dutch courage. It's more just having a few drinks and. Um, yeah, someone just doesn't like it. That's one thing I, I I had to learn over time as well was 
uh, used to when, especially when I first started, when I just thought, oh, everyone's just gonna, you know, like you and you know, because you're playing for Australia, like you're playing for your country and you're um, doing the best that you can. But no, it's, it wasn't the case. So people, people don't like you for a reason. It's that's just that's just life. Um, so I had to had to understand that and get used to that feeling as well. Um, you definitely notice it in different states. Um, on the field, sometimes you, you you cop it a little bit, um, but yeah, it's um that's just life. People, I think once you understand that, that not everyone's going to like you, um, it it definitely makes it a lot easier. That can take quite a while for some people uh, to acknowledge or even not be in denial about the fact that not everyone's going to like you, and especially when you are on a pedestal, whether yeah. you like it or not, not everyone's going to like you yeah. most times. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I mean, we all, like I said, we all um, we all have our own thoughts. We have our own ways of life, and um, not everyone matches up. So that's just the way it is. Like, there's, yeah. I think once you understand that and can be comfortable in that, it's. Um, I think it makes makes it a lot easier. It makes life easier as well. Even doing this now, doing a podcast. I mean, there's going to be criticism, both like good and bad. So there'll be things that I've said that may be taken in a taken in a different way or uh, or just people just don't like um uh but that's just you know I, I i used to think about that a lot and it used to get to me um but whereas now it's like well i've got my own opinion i've got my own story i'm just this is just how it is like i'm not purposely going out there to try and upset anyone or um to to hurt anyone or, or anything like that just i just have my own own thoughts and opinions on things but a lot of what we talk about on here is is my experiences so i think even doing my book i was quite quite worried about that at first because thinking about thinking about like the time that i've had in cricket all those experiences and the one thing that stood out with me was well the reason i'm doing it is because i'm doing it to tell my story how i felt in those times or how i saw things not how someone else saw it so that's how I used to think. Like, I was like when I, especially when I first did the book, I was like real nervous about doing it. Um, but I think it's also one of those things where you make it yourself vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there, so I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable doing that now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, look, it's it, in most people's lives. Uh, whatever you do gets judged by maybe twenty people: your close family, your partner, your kids, your parents, maybe. But whatever yeah. you do and it's not just uh you know wh- how you're bowling or how you're batting it's about how you're carrying on or what, yeah you know, how you're smiling how you're doing by millions of people so you're being judged at every single point of what you do and yeah uh, you know to get out of that feeling cannot be easy i mean to get out of that mindset where you don't care about what people are saying yeah i mean there's uh, like there are times where you still yeah has that little bit of like oh you do care a little bit, but it's like then you realize and take a deep breath and go, well, what does it matter? Um, you just think about what you've just said and, and the whole like, r- whole reason why I've said something, um, trying to get my point across. And if I've done that, then I'm happy. I, I struggle with articulation sometimes. That's where I think I get myself maybe in, tr- in trouble sometimes. I, c- I don't articulate it in a certain way that I think it should be sometimes. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm probably like again just overthinking it. So you just move on and take a deep breath and get on with it. You sound fine to me, Mitch. I think everybody <laughs> listening to this will agree with me. You articulate yourself as well as anyone out there. Uh, and, and speaking of that, you just used a, a, a term sometime back about being two faced, and may, you can maybe get away with being two faced when you are in the public eye or even a, as a as a cricketer in in the dressing room, but one place you can't get away with it is at home with your partner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, what was that transition like? And when you are actively playing sport, I'm sure, like you said, as much as uh, you were aware of not wanting to take any negative thoughts home, I'm sure it's uh, you know it's you're helpless at times, right? Yeah. There are times you can't help yourself but do that. Yeah. Well, luckily. Uh, with Jess's back, background in karate and her competing and and things like that, she had a lot, a lot a real good understanding of of that side of it. So, um, 
yeah, that's where I've been really lucky. Um, uh, when I have taken things home, um, she hasn't let it. Uh, she's never taken it personally or let it affect her. Um, so, and I, I like generally, I, I it wasn't that much anyway. You'd have a bad game or something like that, and you'd be a bit down, or might discuss it. Might even just talk about it a little bit with her, and she, it's just more of a sounding board. Um, so she was really good like that. Um, actually, I got a bit of a story. I was telling some of the um, guys um, this uh, the other day um, that I was in South Africa when I first got that hundred, my first hundred in South Africa, and I had a fight with Jess that morning because she was over. All the partners had come over. And I had a bit of a fight with her in the morning and, and basically said to her, I don't want you to come to the game, you know, blah, blah, don't, I don't want to see you. Um, and she goes, no, nah, I'm coming. You know, you're going to score 100 today. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want you to come. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm really annoyed, like, et cetera, et cetera. Putting it nicely, obviously. And she goes, no, nah, I'm coming. I didn't fly all this way to sit in the hotel room. So anyway, I get out there and I scored the 100 and I've, Went up to the teammates. I was like, "Yep." Yeah. And then I found where her the, the the girls' box was, and I was like, "I gave her like a, you know, the bat and the the helmet." And um, yeah. So it was like um, she she took on a fair bit of my uh, crap at times, but um, she was always there in support, um, which was great. So I think sometimes I <laughs> I needed that little bit of uh, an argument or or something to get me going in the game. I think it was part of my. Unfortunately, I don't think it was, you know, necessarily always great, but yeah, I, I, I'd use that just to fire me up and it fired me up in that, I guess, yeah. So we, we've also learned that the reason Mitchell Johnson did score too many test hundreds is because he didn't piss his partner <laughs> often enough, which is a good thing, which is a very yeah, good thing. Yeah, she'd kick me in the head as well, <laughs> so. No, it's, um, it all happens. It's it, when you're stuck in a, in a small room together on a, on a tour, like it can get a bit too much. You're a bit too much uh, in each other's face, and um, but we had a lot of lot of great times as well. So, yeah. Is it di- more difficult, more challenging to have your partner on tour as compared to say uh, when you're coming back home, your actual home, uh, mm. on a bad day? Um, yes and no. I, I think sometimes it was. It sometimes can be a bit of a distraction. Uh, other times not so I think it was good to have I felt overall it was a good thing Um, as long as you were able to have that ability to keep focused on on why you were there Um, we always it was always good having the girls on tour because um, you know we go and do some stuff together uh, as a group and you get to know each other a lot more and, and and those kind of things but it was also a great breakup of the tour, like generally would happen um, when you had longer tours. Um, otherwise, I felt at times when you, you didn't have them on, on tour that um, you, you do miss home a lot and you just need that person there to help you get through it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I felt like the, the balance was, was fairly right um, and most guys didn't abuse the, um, I guess, the leniency or the... I don't know if it's leniency is the right word, but um, yeah, just having, just being able to have your partner there because we're ultimately you're there to play cricket. The goal is to to win, and um, you're playing for your country, and so you want to be able to make sure you're training hard, you're doing all the right things off the field as well. And I think there's a, always talk about this kind of stuff. It, it comes up, new coaches come in, and there's there's a change of a rule or. Uh, that you know partners on tour or partners only on this part of the tour or and it's always different but i think um they're very important i think they're always treated very well from all coaches anyway even if there are different rules i think um that the coaches know that they play a big part in our careers um and being that support and i think they get treated quite well so um yeah it's uh Hopefully, moving forward, I think with with the amount of cricket that gets played, um, that's something that would, should be monitored quite closely. And um, yeah, as long as it doesn't interfere or impact on on guys playing, then and and bonding as well. You don't want guys to be just going off with their partners uh, and not bonding with the guys. I think that's that's important as well to 
make sure that's all good did the rules change dramatically during your uh, playing career with uh, the different coaches that you had um, Nielsen and Cole? I, I, I don't remember early on I think it was a little bit more open early on and then it sort of changed a little bit um, where it's sort of like two tours I think it was like this Australian summer the partners are around like through obviously with Boxing Day and Christmas that's really important for everyone uh, and then one like overseas tour so like maybe like in England South Africa sometimes India uh, just depended um, and so that was sort of looked after by Cricket Australia it got to a period of time where guys were flying their partners over on just random tours and I think that's where it sort of may have got a little bit out of control at times but um, like I said, as long as it didn't have an impact uh, on on anyone, then then it was fine. Um, I don't know. Like it, it would have been hard for the for the partners anyway, being being on tour half the time. Um, some of the places we go to, like, especially on like a one day tour, like you're traveling, you play, travel, play, travel. Um, you don't have too much time in, in one place. Um, so yeah, I think they generally tried to tour together as well the partners they'd always sort of organize okay we're going to go on this tour and you know so when the boys are at training we'll go and do something together um go see the places that we're in and enjoy it yeah i mean then there's a question of them getting along as well but that's for another day (laughs) because i'm sure that that matters as well not just in australia but anywhere yeah Yeah, people want want them to hang out together they're on tour as well as a team yeah exactly they are 100 percent yep yep yeah. We'll talk about that oh, another time, possibly. Oh, for sure, that could be <laughs> an entire. We'll get we'll get Jess on. She can talk about it. That is true. I think we will have to get Jess on, not just for that, but for a variety of things, starting with the hundred that you scored in in South Africa. Yeah, she <laughs> so, loves that one. Going back to being being two faced, was it something that you were always in control of when it came to just being yourself at home and not carrying that uh, almost that avatar of being that fast bowler back home yeah i don't know i think when the, the more I've, I've like sort of thought about it over time and, and i've spoken to jess about it um it's probably i mean it's not the right term to use but um that's just how i thought at times um but it's just being a normal person i think when you go out in the public you you're not going to be a you're generally not going to be a grumpy person or be angry at like people on the street or this is just if you're like you know Joe Blow type of thing. You're you're not gonna do all those kind of things. Um, that's how I see it. But um, again, it's just my my great mind of mine. Just like I love to overthink things. And well, no, I think you're a deep thinker in my book. I don't think you should. I think you need to stop giving yourself so much grief for just uh, thinking about. I wish more people thought more about their actions and their thoughts. I think the world would be a, a better place if they did. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm doing it right. I don't know. Uh, trust me look at me i look very very wise don't i (laughs) perception again Uh, there you go uh there you go i know some do perceive me i I, trust me the number of people who come up to me uh, asking for life advice and never ever uh kind of probe into the kind of life they kiss do they kiss your feet and everything like that uh it's more the back of my hand actually it's yeah it's funny (laughs) this guy in uh at the MCG once, uh, was it the MCG or somewhere outside the MCG came up to me and uh, he kind of like, you know, drew a cross on my heart, just a r- random strange guy yeah, right. and said that, uh, asked me to pray for him. So, yeah. Maybe he was right. setting up a target. Maybe he target was. Practice. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, it's been five or six years. Uh, I haven't been shot yet. So that's a no, good sign. Good. That's good. <laughs> but, but, you know... Uh, I remember speaking to a few cricketers, especially when COVID happened and there was no cricket, yeah. uh, to guys who, you know, about the whole first day and the rest of their life, uh, and cricketers from around the world. And a, one thing I found in common with male cricketers was about how they also start looking at their relationships differently. Uh, some in extreme cases. One of one uh, one cricketer, former cricketer, uh, said how you know he was happily married and this partner was happy with him touring around the world. But then suddenly when he retired and he started spending more time at home, yeah. he started looking at their relationship differently, like both of them, because fi- suddenly you were in each other's face a lot more. Yeah. 
unfortunately for them, it didn't work out, but now he's happily remarried and whatever. But um, what was it like for you? I mean, suddenly you're home more, you're not on the road as often as before. So you have to spend more time with your partner, which can be a good and a bad thing or, yeah. or somewhere in the middle. Yeah, we used to joke about this all the time, Jess and I. It was like, especially when I first first stopped, it was like, she just wanted me out of the house. <laughs> I spent too much time. I was like, I think there was that expectation I was going to be leaving again and then, you know, get that bit of sort of uh, normality, I, I guess. Because um, I used to find it when I'd go on tour and come back, whether it was for a week or I think, you know, I'd sort of try and fit in to the schedule of the house. Um, I didn't want to mess up anything or go about it the wrong way it was but it was it was quite it's quite a hard situation to be in as well because it's my home as well um even though i'm not there often it was my home as well and i wanted to do things my way so i think at first i just sort of uh i I tried to maybe fight it a little bit and then i just got over it i was just like i just just get on i'm only home for a week just whatever happens happens just fit in where i can and then I guess when when everything stopped for me, stopped playing cricket, um, yeah, it's definitely it's a bit of a shock to the system. You are spending a lot of time together, and I even now I get the occasional oh, if I'm not doing much in the week, it's like oh, why don't you go do something, get out of the house and go <laughs> go train with your mates. That's that's why I did a bit of the MMA stuff. It was like just to you know to be doing something, so instead of annoying her, uh, I'm sure she would like me to do more housework as well, but. Um, yeah, there's there's definite there's a definite change in in the household uh, from when you're playing to when you finish, um, and it is it is quite tough. And I can see why, you know, people do struggle with it when they come out of the game, and because it changes everything. The dynamics definitely change, uh, and you have more of a say. You want to get your say in there now. Like for me, it's having my part to do and my my views on how I see things in the house and. Just you know, normal. It's it, it's it's funny because it should be normal things, but we're so used to being apart. Like and I've actually been talking with a few of the retired players in the Legends League. Would you know? We've been quite open about all this kind of stuff and talking about it. Like, and we're all going through very similar things. And that was one of the things that did come up was about the time some of them are going now they're at home. It's like oh, you know, you get to see that person in a different way, and and you're spending so much time, but. Um, that's why we, you know, we we married as well, and, and we want to spend that time together. It's just, uh, it's just the life, um, I guess, uh, battles that you have with with your partner, and um, yeah, everyone has their ups and downs, and um, I think it's just trying to work on each day, just trying to get better and and keep working each other out, and um, got to. I think one of the biggest things is not to forget to enjoy life. Um, you know, and again, things change when we had kids. That was another thing. Like, we didn't have a lot of time together before. Um, you know, we had kids. Um, so it's yeah, it's all those things that come into it. And it's just, I just look at it now. I'm just trying to live life, but want to have fun doing it. Yeah, it certainly you are as well. Uh, but were but, but some aspects of fitting into uh, the schedule of uh, you know, like you said, just 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 basically the household that were more difficult than others back then was it what do you mean no i mean like some aspects of like you said how you were constantly trying to fit into yeah. uh the tempo and everything else yeah. of you know how the household is yeah, yeah. Like. well one of the things i remember was actually so i'd come back and all i'd want to do is do nothing i'd actually just want to rest didn't want to do anything at all i might catch up with my mates I, that was one of the things i wanted to do i wanted to catch up with my friends and she took it as I didn't want to be with her. But the other thing was she wanted to get out and about and, you know, go and you know, do things together. And um, so it was like, yeah, it was a bit all over the place at first. But um, it's it, it comes down to, again, like it's that communication. And if you don't communicate it, then it makes it hard. Um, like I'm not the greatest communicator, but uh, that's for sure. And I'm trying to get better at it now. now. Um and it definitely makes it easier when you communicate it, um, how you're feeling and how you, what you want to do. And but yeah, definitely I went through that period of of time when I was playing and not. I just I just wanted to relax when I got home. She was keen to go and have dinners, and I was having dinners when I was on tour. So it was the last thing I wanted to do. I just wanted to stay and have home cooked meals, 
you know, she was over all that stuff. So it's it was hard. It was a hard balance. Um, and yeah, I think if we can fight through being apart for as long as we did, and at times that um, through my career, then um, you know, I can fight through the times we have now. I think yeah, you got you got to fight. You do. You certainly do. That's just a part of uh, being married. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and like so, once you retire, like you are, and you're spending more time, uh, were well, there just some basic things that you had to kind of uh, get on top of? What they like, you know, whether it's just laundry or and look, it's also we're talking yeah. about an Australian cricketer here. Like you know, there are no, we don't. If, however rich you are or whatever, everybody doesn't have housemaids or people to come and do yeah. the household shows, which is very yeah. different in India. So so uh, those aspects of just like you know being home, doing laundry or picking up the kids. Uh, how long did it take for you to kind of get in tune with it? Yeah, still haven't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, um, I think I lived out of my suitcase for a year after I retired. I still lived out of my suitcase, like I, yeah, I just couldn't get that one out of out of my system straight away. Um, really odd one, but just so used to living out of a suitcase, I was happy with the clothes I had in it, and it just made life easier for me. It was just simple. I guess the other one is just that, yeah, it's just, it's the house, housework stuff. Um, yeah, I, I don't know who too many people like it. I don't know. My wife doesn't like it. No one really likes doing it, but it, she just cracks <laughs> on and does it. Um, yeah. So, um, and I think the kids, the kids, kids one is, um, yeah, a tough one as well. Like, I mean, I'm just sort of thinking about it now. Um, being in the Legends League, I, I sort of think, you know, I've got to go home in the next like couple of weeks and it's like I've been pretty spoilt here you know sleeping in um <laughs> and, and not not doing anything so then that's going to be that hard transition again to go back home and then you know got the kids get them um, being up in the morning getting themselves ready um or getting ready for school and getting them off to school but um but look I I don't know there's there's nothing transition wise at home that I look at and go they're not hard things to do it's just they're just things that you have to do yeah um so it's yeah it's just being I think just more aware of it than anything oh, and not and, and really not going and hiding and training all the time <laughs> 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 actually do some stuff at home Jess will be like Jess will listen to this and go you, you still do nothing but yeah have my moments. Don't worry. We'll spend one entire episode talking about Mitchell Johnson and household shorts. Like, you know, how he does it. We'll get into great detail. Like, how you do your dishes. What's your technique in stacking up a dishwasher? Oh, I don't start with that. dishwasher. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> bad with that. Like, I, it has to be, like, neat and it has to be, like, a certain way. I'm very bad with that. I, I just have a feeling <laughs> you're very good at stacking things up in the fr- in the refrigerator. I don't know why. I just have this feeling. Oh, I used to be. I'm not... I'm, see, like, having kids has changed all that. Like, it's not as uh, yeah. stressful now. Like, And I, I actually, the other thing... Like with kids, like just the mess around the house. Like I used to like just think that was just what's going on here. And then I'm like, ah, I'm not so worried about it now. It's just it is what it is. They'll be growing up soon, and they'll they'll yeah. you know be better at tidying after themselves. And it's just again like you take that moment to think, okay, they're kids. I was a kid once, and you just <laughs> have that awareness of what. Yeah, I think if you take the deep breath, it's all right. I need to take more deep breaths, though. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's something we've learned on this show. Yeah, yeah. Mitchell Lots Johnson's answer to most things is to take a deep breath in life, which is, I think, a good lesson. It's See, sometimes good I'm lesson. good at giving advice as well, and I need to true. actually listen to that advice. So, that's yeah. true. That's true. I know. I mean, you need to start listening to your own advice, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that, and you speak a lot about having a purpose in life right uh, which is i think something we are all seeking and when you play sport when you play cricket at the highest level or any level for that matter uh, your goals are kind of tangible aren't they i mean it's about winning a match or a series or bowling well or yeah. getting the captain out or uh, you know or working yourself up in training bowling x number of balls the fact that that isn't there anymore once you retire i mean yes i mean you want to stay happy you want to enjoy yeah. life but you can't kind of there are no stats to those aspects. I mean, or those things, right? Like you, it, yes, we all want to be happy. We all want to yeah. uh, 
be good parents. But for someone like you, who's even if you didn't believe in stats, you had those really fixed goals, which yeah, are yeah. now a little more arbitrary in some ways. So, so how, how do you yeah. adjust to that? I don't know. It's a good question. It's like something I'm still going through. It's because, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to... F- I don't think now I'm trying to find that buzz that I used to get from cricket. I think I'm happy with with that side of it. I sort of I think when I finished I was trying to look for something like that. I'm not so worried about that. That's that's, that's sort of come to me in the last probably 6 to 8 months. Um you know, I'm not sort of searching for for that, but I think you still have to set like goals. You still have to have goals in life. So I think where I'm at at the moment with all that is is setting up this future of mine with the commentary stuff or you know coming over maybe playing some legends legends league stuff um every year it's just it's more being balanced i think i'm trying to get myself to and then have that thing outside as well which i can uh push myself out which is the the charity boxing match i think that's how i'm trying to look at life now um yeah i think it changes all the time i think you go through so many different changes but i think uh I'm trying to make it for me as as balanced as possible. Like even even playing this Legends League now, like I'm, it, it's quite a serious. It, it has actually quite become quite serious as the games have gone on. Um, the standard is quite high, apart from probably the fielding. The fielding's a little bit a bit slower and and things like that. But I think from batting and bowling, I see like there's that a lot of the guys have become very competitive, and that's just natural. Like we're all in that, um, we all feel the same, but. I've just looked at it and and even like I I can't I've sort of wanted to be a bit more serious but I'm like I don't think why I think I don't need to like prove anything I don't need to I'm not disrespecting the league the league is yeah. called Legends League um yeah exactly and you know, we're not there to um you know, there is finals and things like that and obviously the team wants to get there um but I think how I'm sort of looking at this is I'm I just want to enjoy it I'm just having fun like I mean yeah, I'll let a ball go here and there, that good pace. Um, and I might get a little bit annoyed at something here and there I have throughout the tournament, but mostly it's just been like, I'm just enjoying it. Like, just have fun, laugh. It's great to actually be out in the middle again. We had a really good crowd uh, when we played in Delhi. Um, and and there's a lot of people watching it and, and enjoying it. So you know, a lot of the messages that come through uh, through social media has been been awesome as well. It's just people have enjoyed seeing, um, the you know past players playing. So, yeah, I guess that's just where I'm at at life now. I just want to try and, yeah, I know I'm not gonna, um, be an MMA fighter. I know I'm not gonna be a you know a boxer. I know I'm not gonna be this or that. I'm just, yeah, I've got that little plan. Um, you know, I guess those goals in life. Um, just want to be be happy. Want to keep things simple. Um, and just enjoy, enjoy my family. Yeah, but one thing you can be, and you're already being very good at, is being a podcaster. So that's that's something. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, well, we'll see, mate. Goal. We'll see you, with the ratings. We will, we will. Yeah, we will eventually get judged by uh, by ratings. Even though we just love talking to each other, so we'll continue doing this, whether we are recording it or not. <laughs> Definitely, so, mate. Uh, and look, uh, you sp- we speak about purpose, but there's also a question of uh self-worth right when you are playing sport at such a competitive level um there's that drive i mean there's a drive uh, that's all the ultimate right the drive is what pushes you but when you suddenly retire uh, and i'm not even talking about the adulation or the fanfare or any Mm. of that but do you have days where you suddenly feel like what's the point of being me not doing what like you said especially if you're a fast bowler the day you said you felt that you weren't bowling fast anymore, you quit. That or not, yeah, yeah. You didn't quit, but you retired. So now, do you the, were there times early on when you suddenly felt like, what's the point of being me? Like you know, I, what, what what's the point? What's the purpose? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, I, I was really fixated on like having a purpose. I think I think we we yeah we definitely need to have a purpose, but. I was probably like thinking more so I have to be a professional something. I have to get that like buzz again. Like I think I was really like trying to pursue that. Whereas now it's, yeah, it's not like that. It's, I think I'm just sort of going along with the ride. I've, I've got some things in place. Um, 
uh, like I said, I, I, in the last probably you know six to eight months, is really my mindset has changed a lot. Um, I still go through ups and downs um, through the depression side of things, but um, I think generally, I, I think my mind is is trying to be be clearer. Uh, I'm trying to have more, yeah, that clarity, I guess. Um, same same thing, isn't it, really? But um, and just yeah, trying to um, not overcomplicate things. Um, so I'm actually working probably more on myself than thinking about other stuff like that I should be doing or I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I've, I'm not doing enough or I'm... So I'm actually trying to work on me as a person first and then I think that's more important to me right now because that'll make me a better person then I'll be able to do all the things that that I want to do. Yeah, that, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can just be a better better husband, a better father yeah. and, and a better son and all of that, right? Like it yeah. starts with... I just, uh, yeah, I just think we live in like... The world that we live in now is so it's just become so complicated i think and we make it complicated so i'm just it's so fast paced and there's stresses and i'm I'm just trying to dissolve all those things as much as i can like i don't i don't need to be stressed out about little things um so i'm trying to just be a calmer person and just work on me and like i'm not just being not in a selfish way like it's doing it for you know everyone like in the family is to be I think that's I look at it as a as that that's the big picture. It's um doing it so uh, yes, I get better as a person, but it's going to be better if I'm a better person for my family. And getting rid of that not getting rid, but overcoming that inherent selfishness that comes from being yeah. a a sportsman. Uh, uh, does that take time? Does that take Ooh, yeah. time to get over? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Um I think it's um yeah, to have that that mindset of that you you've got to you got to train you've got to go do your physio you've got everything's about you like um i still slip into it every now and then this is why actually coming coming on to the legends league was a bit of a concern for me um for that reason uh, because i didn't want to slip back into thinking that way um so i'm glad that i'm not thinking that way through it that's why i think i've got the diff the, the attitude of like just enjoying it because if I get that real competitive streak back, then I think it would switch my mindset. Um, and I don't need to be doing that. So, yeah, I think that selfishness is... Um, I mean, we're all selfish in a little way in some things, I think. But, um, yeah, I, I think I've definitely... That's been something that's um, that was really noticeable when I finished, more so. Like, I think I knew it when I was playing. Uh, I knew that, yeah, I was selfish with a lot of stuff. But... Um, again, just being so supportive um, and understanding was was you know a big help in that. But um, yeah, afterwards it was like she was like you got to shut that down. Like she was shutting me down on a lot of stuff. So um, so yeah, I, I definitely um, have worked on that. Do you do have a much better balance now in terms of like when you are home a lot more as you are and you don't tour as much as you did uh, even two years ago? I mean, even England two thousand nineteen. Uh, yep. You were away for quite a while, but now, uh, do you think you've finally found like the good uh, balance in terms of things she does, things she do, things you do together, like you know, and then having your own time, having her own time? Yeah. Now that you are in the same place so much. Yeah, definitely getting there. Like I think it's still a work in progress. I think the time together is probably something that I need to be better at. If I'm being perfectly honest, um, it's quite difficult when you got young kids. You, you know, they definitely come first. Um. Oh, we got so much. Well, Jess has got so much going on in her life as well. Like she's, you know, studying to uh, interior design, um, and we've just had husky puppies. Um, and she's, you know, she does a lot of my book work stuff. Um, so she's um, a very busy person. Oh, she's got a karate karate school as well, um, teaching and that. And she's going for a black belt. I think third and fourth or fifth dan or something like that. Um, so she's, I mean. She likes to keep really busy, whereas I'm happy to have a little bit more time to relax. <laughs> um, but it's more, yeah, just it's we, we yeah, it's something that you know, I'm, I've spoken about. We're just trying to have a bit more of a, a good balance with um, just me and her um, as well. I think that's like you know extremely important. From from what you've said about being an international cricketer, you almost are. Uh, 
to quote uh, Morgan Freeman from the Shawshank Redemption, you are almost institutionalized, right? You are so, in terms of the structure you spoke about, uh, you spoke of, uh, in terms of the routine you spoke about, practice is from 11 to 2. Or the game, you know, always is like, you know, you need to leave at 8. The bags need to be out at a certain time. Yeah. To break out of that, and like you said, now you maintain your own calendar, to create your own structure, I'm sure it 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 takes some time. Yeah. And, and w- like, did some time just pass by you? You think like, uh, while you were looking for that structure, uh, a few days or weeks or months just passed by, and you're like, wow, what happened there? Yeah, I do. I do think that I've wasted time. Um, it's certain. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not gonna like dwell on it too much. I think it's um what's done is done, and it's about. And I'm only just going through this more recently in, in recent times, to be honest, um, where it's, I, I guess I look at this, right? I, and with that routine side of things, it's it's going to take me out of my comfort zone. And that's I always talk about being taken out of your comfort zone. I enjoy, when it comes to the physical side, I definitely like like taking on the, the charity for the boxing match is taking me out of my comfort zone, but physically. and it, But it's going to make me, I feel like that'll make me a stronger person, a better person with a lot of things. So I have to have that same mindset when it comes to, you know, whether it's organizing a holiday or organizing taking Jess to, to dinner or getting the kids, the, the babysitter that they need. Like just that takes me out of my comfort zone big time. But it, because it's more mental, I don't know if that makes sense at all. Um, yeah, no, it does, yeah. So... I, I just need to do it, like, and just, yeah. So I, I, I do think about these things. Like I said, yeah, I, I probably am a, a deep thinker, and and I do think about all this stuff a lot. Um, yeah, it's just being able to probably structure it in my head and be just just do it. Sometimes, sometimes I don't, I think about it too much and I don't do it, and I just need to maybe if it comes into my head, think about it. Okay, I'm gonna do it and just do it. One hand, you have the whole thing about maintaining your calendar, knowing, you know, what you're doing when. But on the other hand, it's also about just doing stuff, right? I mean, doing the, doing your routines like you did yeah. when you were a cricketer. Just that the routines have changed. It doesn't yeah. mean that you don't have a routine. Yeah, it's just different. It's 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 um I've got different things on. I've, I've got different activities through the day. It's just it's just, it's, it's, it's just not cricket, um, and it's something that yeah I've become to understand more. Um, and we'll continue to understand more as I go along. Like always learning. I always said that with even with cricket. Like even when I retired, I said I still felt like I was learning um, the game. And I think um, I think that I just look at that life. You always you're going to make mistakes. You're going to um, make plenty of them. But it's how you how you learn from them. And um, yeah, I think one of the biggest things is is actually not. Yeah, just thinking about it now, like talking about things um, is easy. Um, it's actually just doing it. Like I said, like I just have to. You just have to do it. Like it's simple as that. Just do it. I hope that brings Nike on board as well. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that might upset. Uh, well, I still get looked after by Asics. Um, they've looked after me oh, with my nice. cricket cricket spikes for this this trip. So to the Legends League. Um, yeah, so they've been. Been good. I don't know if they'll be happy with with that slogan. Maybe they we'll take away. Maybe we can have both. <laughs> Some ambush marketing. Uh, nah, it, I, lo- I love. Are. I love my Asics. They are good. They got me through. Go. My we career. will cut cut that bit out and send it to them. Don't worry, Mitch. Like, yeah, so yep, we'll make sweet. sure you. You know, this relationship <laughs> continues. Uh, now that's you know that kind of tell tells you how this whole life is about transitioning, as we said. Uh, very early on this uh, during this episode and if i were to ask you uh, finally to just sum this up if a cricketer walks up to you today and says you know what i might be nearing the end of my career uh, i you know i might be retiring soon what should i look forward to like you know how is it going to be like mike hussey had a word with you you said uh, yeah. so what would your advice be now having been out of it for a while uh, i just think it, it, i'd always say to people um is make sure you've got the you know good people around you. I think that's really important. Um, and I guess another thing would be just to sometimes we're probably too hard on ourselves as well when we come out of the game, and we have 
maybe hot, too high expectations on, on things. Um, I think it's just it's just take a, take that deep breath and just just relax for a moment and and have a think about about what's really going on. I think I think we just yeah maybe just need to step back sometimes and and actually have a look at what we're actually doing and what we've got coming up. Um, and not to not to be, I may I say this actually to the young kids when they're coming in through the game, uh, trying to play for you know a higher level. I just say patience is is a is a key, and I think patience probably is is a key in life as well, especially when you come out of it. Um, and if you if you need help, ask for help. That's probably another one. Don't don't go through it and think that you're gonna. It's just gonna happen. Like if you need help, get help. Like or speak to a past player, or I think that's what I wish I'd done. Probably more so is maybe just speak to a few players more often. Um, once I got out of the game, I think sometimes you feel like you've got no one and in the game. Um, I think that just autom- we just automatically think as cricketers that once you're out, that's it. Like you you're not mates with those guys that you're playing with that are still playing. Or the guys that you did play with, and or even guys that we've not played with that have played the game, and um, you may have had some interactions with them throughout your time. Like, I think just talking to anyone that's been in in that same position is is pretty pretty important. I think that's great advice, seriously, and not just for uh, just cricketers who are you know retiring, but for anyone who's transitioning from I don't know, one profession to the other yeah. or one as like you know one phase in your life to the other. Uh, is yeah to know that you you aren't alone and if you if you you know yeah uh, you need to find people to talk to at times but at times you realize that you don't have to go looking like people yeah. around and, you are the ones and I think talk. even speaking to people that have transitioned really well out of the mm-hmm. game is a, is a is a good one as um, also I think um, they've got some good stuff they've obviously transitioned well um, there's a reason for it so it might not be a bad option as well to speak to those type of people that have um you know uh come out of it smoothly and and i think i, I sort of I actually just looking at it you, you look at those those type of guys like i guess ricky ponning's probably one of them um in recent times um you know he sort of um did a bit of the the commentary stuff and um but i, I think like it's keeping keeping yourself keeping your mind busy is one of the big things as well um when you do come out but um yeah, just talking to guys that have experienced it from both sides is, is um really important. Very much so. Yeah, and like you said, not not to not to be too hard on yourself, to be desperate to find that next big thing to yeah. do. Right. Like you said, yeah, because you're so used to doing that yeah. so many years. From the time you were you almost plucked away uh from your childhood, right? Like from your early teens in most cases or yeah. in your late teens. Uh, and like we said, you're never allowed to grow up. So to almost allow yourself to to evolve, to grow up. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think don't think that you that I'm going to be judging you if you were to come to ask me. I'm definitely not someone who's going to be judging you. Um, yeah, I, I quite enjoy actually talking to to pe- uh, past players or players playing now that you know need that advice um, because yeah, we do as players. We've got plenty of experience um we've we've lived um some you know um lived through some stuff so um yeah why not use us perfect and you can always listen to uh mick johnson talk about uh everything there is to talk about in life on his very own podcast the mick johnson show which is this uh, this one and uh thank you so much for all, right. all that mitch and thank you to all of you for listening to us and we'll be with you next week as always.